This morning we are continuing with verse 8 from Sri Sri Radha Rasa Sudhaniti. Jai Sri Radha, Jai Gurudev. So we finished off and Mohan was praying with folded hands to Radharani's maidservants. Because they were the gatekeepers that were keeping him away from her and their amorous meeting. Srimat Rupa Goswami prays, O Queen of Vrindavan, I pray for your mercy again and again, let me be the object of even Keshi Ripu's, Krishna's, pitiful prayers. This service of Sri Radha is the very special mercy of Sriman Mahaprabhu. Well. <clears throat> the Kinkaris only like Mohan because he is Sri Radha's lover. They don't have independent love for him. If Mohan makes any trouble, they will kick him out of the kunja. Without the permission of Srimati Rupa Manjari and her maidservants, Mohan cannot enter Radha's groves. What to speak of touching her body? This is the indescribable greatness of Radha's maidservants. When the maidservants see how anxious Mohan is, they allow him to enter the kunja. They don't need Radharani's permission because they know that although she is angry with Mohan, she is also anxiously waiting for him. Shamasundra knows that Srimati will soon give up her peak when he has pleased her girlfriends and her maidservants. Thus, Rusik Shiromani Mohan, the crown jewel of romantics, enters the kunja and dispels the unfavorable mood 
of Rasika Mani. Shri Radhika. Radhe Radhe. Good morning. Radhe. One question arises in my mind. <laughs> how he please the, the Sakis, girlfriends, and how he please the maidservants? What is the difference? You, you just read this, no? Right? Yeah. So, Ramasundra knows that Srimati will soon give up her peak when he has pleased her girlfriends and her maidservants. Mm -hmm. So, What is the difference? How he pleased? The girlfriends. So what is the reason of his, of, of Swamini's man? Hmm? Why she is in man? Her man gives waves to her Baba. But why why she came in man? She came in man because she because uh previously it was describing that she that Mohan left the Kunja to go meet with her Sakis, but then her Sakis appeared. And so Srimati thought that Mohan was out, um, where does it say, was out meeting with other, mm -hmm. surely that king of womanizers must have met some other heroine. Some other heroine being one of the Raj Gopis. Yes, and maybe also the Sakis. Mm. Because there is described that only the maidservants are uh, the god, uh, the goalkeepers, the dog keepers, or what is the name? Yeah, gate gatekeepers. The kinkeris, gatekeepers. The kinkeris, yeah. the smallest are the gatekeepers, right? Yeah. Not the Sakis. Sakis not gatekeepers. No, they can't be. That's not possible. So, then the question is how he pleased the Sakis and how he pleased the Kinkaris. There must be a difference. So, he pleased the Kinkaris uh, by begging with folded hands, right? Mm. But how he pleased the Sakis?
Mahatmaji, if there is no answer, you can also continue. That's no problem. Um, I mean, I'm not too familiar with the mood of the Sakis, but it says previously that Radharani, when she's in the Kunja with Mohan, she says, Alas, how sweetly we are playing here. How sad that my girlfriends cannot relish this. Ah. So, perhaps by giving the opportunity to relish Mohan, mm -hmm. if the Sakis get this opportunity, then Srimati will come out of her man. That's the point. And the maidservants, as you said, with kink, the kinkaris are, to me, they're pleased when they're serving Radharani, when we get the opportunity to serve. And so, as the gatekeepers, they're already in service. I love the line before that says they don't need Radharani's permission because they know that although she is angry with Mohan, she is also anxiously waiting for him. So the maidservants are so close to Radharani, they have this monovistum, they can feel exactly her heart, and so they can act on her behalf without speaking. Radhe, Radhe. So I understood like that uh, Radhika is in Man because she knows that it's the Rasalila night and she only expects that um, Mohan will meet another heroine and already this brings her in Man. It was given before in the text. And then Krishna comes to the uh, Bawa and says, no, I, I didn't do anything. I Actually, he went out in search of the girlfriends, if it's maidservants or gopis, I guess maidservants, right? Because they are near in the Kunja. But actually, they went inside the Kunja when he went out. So it's really funny. <laughs> and you couldn't find them. I, I think, my dear, he, he went out in search of the Sakis. Okay. The, the maidservants have stayed there. Um, and Mohan left the um, Kunja when Radharani became so concerned um, over, her, over her girlfriends that... Um, they're, they're Leela in the Kunja was paused. It says here, um, when Mohan, the jewel of Rasiks, sees Radharani in this pensive mood, the pensive mood being that she's thinking how sad I am that my girlfriends cannot relish this, this meeting that they're engaging in this pastime, or this Leela. He understands what is on her mind and thinks to himself, oh well, when she is so worried about her girlfriends, 
then there can be no more joy in our love play together. I'd better go and look for them. So this is Mohan leaving the Kunja to go look for the Sakis, Radharani's girlfriends, mm -hmm. is the way I interpret it, which could be wrong. And then as he leaves, the it's like the classic like cartoon where like he goes out the front door and the Sakis come in the back door. And so then Radharani is like, the Sakis are here. What is Mohan doing? I thought he was going out to meet with my girlfriends. This was my desire. And he's out searching around. He can't find the Sakis because they've come in the back door. And he or she, Radharani, assumes that because Shamasundra is no longer there, that he has met some other Vraj Gopi, some other heroine to meet and enjoy with. And this is the, um, the reason for her, her mon. But I think the real reason for her mon is a little bit further down where it says... Srila Rupa Goswami says in Ujvala Nam Nilamini that this man is the result of pure love only. Fear cannot arise without affection and proud, jealous anger man cannot arise without love. So it's Radharani's highest love for Mohan that allows this Mon to exist and through this Mon they can relish their love even deeper. And the maidservants are also relishing this mon because it is because of this mon that Srimati engages her maidservants as gatekeepers and forbids them to allow Sham to enter the kunja. So because of the mon, the maidservants are also getting engaged in service. Shamasundra knows that Srimati will soon give up her peak when he has pleased her girlfriends and her maidservants. Thus, Rasik Shiromani Mohan, the crown jewel of romantics, enters the kunja and dispels the unfavorable mood of Rasika Mani, Sri Radhika, the jewel of romantic girls, causing a slight smile to appear on her beautiful face like a thin, sweet line.
let's stay in this meditation because it's uh, it's a deep object of the feelings of our Swamini and Mohan, the Manjaris, Kinkaris and the Sakis. Mm. When uh, Radhika in the Kunja with Mohan in the beginning, she felt compassion to the to her sakis and the gopis, right? Mm. Simultaneously, she felt also the desire in Mohan to enjoy with the others because he was uh, in the rasa dance. And so there is a some kind of a disturbance in the meeting she could feel. And so to fulfill the desires of the Sakis and Gopis and of Mohan, she let him go. But then when he came back, he, why he come back? Because he cannot find the same pleasure with all others, gopis and sakis, than with Manjari, uh, with, uh, sorry, with uh, Radhika. And so he, this is also a proof of her, uh, uh, what is it, superiority. She is higher, the highest. Is it the right word? Superiority? Mm. So he went out only to come back. And he fulfill, fulfilled the desires of the Sakis and the Gopis, but he came back. And then he also fulfilled the desires of the maidservants by begging them to enter the Kunj again, so they can serve Swamini properly and they feel Swamini's feelings and let them in. And even to increase his feelings, she is showing this kind of man. So there are, uh, there are deep uh, feelings to understand in this this verse. It's amazing how Swamini is balancing all this situation. And uh, at the same time increasing the rasa of Sakis, Gopis, Manjaris, and Mohans. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, how this is also increasing their love for each other. This is yeah. like the beautiful yes. inner workings of the... Yes. All every everything goes towards increasing the the feeling of the love of Radharani and Mohan, and it all kind of links together and interworks in this beautiful way that facilitates the desires of 
as you said, the Sakis, the Mandris, Mohan, and at the same time increases the love for the Yugala Kishore. And all managed by Radhika. Oh my God. Did I ask something to clarify? Um, yeah, please. Thank you. Yesterday also in the sharing with Udava, it was coming this um, different feelings that are part of love. And I just wanted to ask... Um, if it's a good understanding, uh, so our material, my material feelings, they change, right? I experience maybe love, but then suddenly another feeling comes. So it's always changing, yeah? And coming back also, changing. And so I think <laughs> this Leela has nothing to do or not so much to do with this kind of changing that I experience here. Um, but I understood like, if it would be only sweetness in the Leela, it couldn't be um, like only togetherness. It would also um, not, there wouldn't be a variation and there wouldn't be a kind of, Yeah, always being fresh, right? <laughs> then it's always sweet. So that this man and this kind of um, experience of separation and all this is coming in to heighten, to make Krishna, for example, more eager when he's forbidden by the manjaris to go in the kunjas or he's even chastised by them. So he's, his love is getting his eagerness is getting stronger and then the, the meeting will also be much more um, intense. Um, so I just wanted to ask you about this. Thank you. Because in one side we say also love is the, the absence of fear, right? In, in the materialistic way and in that moment I, I cannot experience love when I'm actually fearful in the material. This is my um, feeling. But of course, if somebody I love, I cannot see him, I will think more intensely of him or her and um, long, the longing will go stronger to exchange or to meet. Yeah, that's a beautiful question. Um, I would, my feeling is 100% the the man is there to increase the loving feelings of between Radharani and Mohan. Um, I think about, you know, like Gurudev has, he says that you, um, the salt makes you appreciate the sweet even more. And you can see this in the, in the way he takes Prashad, you know, when he has that big plate of fruit, he puts some salt, some black salt, Kalanamak, on the corner. 
and he dips everything, no matter how sweet the fruit is, he dips a little bit of salt in there. And the first time I saw that, I was like, what a weird salt on fruit? Like, that, why would you do that? You're ruining the sweetness of, of the fruit. And then you try it and you're like, wow, that actually, it increases the, um, in, somehow increases the flavor. It brings out more sweetness because of the salt. Without the salt there, the, the sweetness, the love can't be relished in the same way. And so, because that salt is there, because that mon is there, then um, the level of relishment of this sweetness, of this love, is able to go even deeper. It was nice. It was a very nice description of Anana. It's more of a there was more of a description than a question. And I think you got it right. But we could add the observation that um, the most important experience in uh, in bhakti is uh, love and separation. Anytime there's a relation, then there's a distance. If there's a relation, then there's two. If there's two, then they're not in unity. So the experience of love is always the experience of longing, of wanting to be together. And this can be, this creates um, secondary emotions like fear or man, or this peak, you know, this this annoyance kind of anger or a little bit more prideful anger. All of these are created by the experience of having to be separated from the one you actually feel it's your um, destiny to be united with. In a way, everything about bhakti remind, uh, revolves around this experience. The relation of Radha and Mohan, it's always feeling of separation, trying to get back together. And the, the, the experience of Prabhupada for example, among others, is to come together with with Swamini in the in the spiritual plane. And then finally our experience as devotees, as sadhikas, is to come into unity. So this longing is really the fundamental um, emotion, but also energy. It's the fuel for our devotion. It's what makes us get up in the morning. It's because we want to be together. Even though we don't ever seem to learn that we're never, <laughs> we're never together. Or when we're together, it's only in a short moment, and then there's separation again in order to recreate the belonging and the love. I don't know. Yeah. That's beautiful, Uddhava. Yeah, our, the separation increases our desire. Mm. You, you never actually... Uh, We never actually read about them being together. Have you noticed? We understand they're together. We we read about the the bed being messed up, <laughs> and we read about uh, about his clothes being uh, torn off, and we can very well imagine they've been together. But it's never described this togetherness. A little bit more in uh, in uh, books like uh, Govinda Lalamrita, La but never actually. It's always the separation we learn about and the longing. So it's almost as though the union, the actual sexual union or loving union, doesn't even matter. What matters is getting there.
not coming where I read it now, but I recall somewhere from, I think Philip Kusmanjali is saying exactly that, Udavo, that's saying that Radharani actually relishes the separation more than the union itself. Radhe, Radhe, thank you so much. I actually have one more uh, question. Is it okay? So, also yesterday it was mentioned in the sharing that Sriman Mahaprabhu experienced this Leela and um, he shared it to his closed uh, company. So, is it then that they wrote down this Radharasa Sutanidi and Vilap Kusumanjadi and that Rupa Goswami? So, I really didn't get that. I didn't know about this, um, his sharing about it. So, how do these texts actually, did they emerge? If somebody could share something about it. Yeah, it was like you said. Um, <clears throat> I mean, remember in also Mahaprabhu has material form and spiritual form. He's man of he's, he's a material being. He comes and takes birth. And in this material being, he's um, in his consciousness, he's Radha and Mohan. And in his spiritual existence, he's the Leela itself. He's this Leela of Radha and Mohan meeting every day and what we read about. And the way that we got this is that he taught Rupa Goswami, um, Jiva Goswami, Sanatana Goswami. He took them aside and taught them orally. And I don't know that we read exactly what he said, but he, I understand he, he communicated these leelas to them. He said, this is what it looks like in the spiritual world. Now please go and teach this to your to the rest of the world. And then the six Goswamis went out and wrote their books, many books. <laughs> and then the disciples of the Goswamis, like Antaras Prabhaji and Prabhupada Saraswati, wrote their books about those books. But it was a direct instruction from Mahaprabhu. And that we can only imagine that he was translating what he was experiencing sp on the spiritual plane to them, and that's how we get this Leela. And then the first version of it was Rupa Goswami went and <clears throat> wrote two plays that depicted the Radha and Mohan in the forest, and then this grew and grew and grew, all through realizations of the Goswamis, and then from the realizations of, the, of their disciples. Thank you. Wow. It's quite beautiful. Quite beautiful story. Somehow I didn't have this connection yet, so it's very good, very helpful for me.
दस रसिक शिरोमानी मोहन द क्राउन जूल ऑफ रोमांटिक्स एंटर्स द कुंज एंड डिस्पेल्स द अनफेवरेबल मूड ऑफ रसिका मानी Shri Radhika the jewel of romantic girls causing a slight smile to appear on her beautiful face like a thin sweet line the king of romantics becomes absorbed in his love plays with his heart's beloved holding her in his jewel like heart seeing this sweet lila shripad who now appears as an adolescent girl says shri radha is the jewel in mohan's heart taken that the word rasa means mohan who is spiritual flavor personified shri radha's sweetness and beauty is manifest to the utmost when she plays with mohan <clears throat> shri la raghunath das go swami writes in u Vishakanandana stotram Shri Radha shines like a golden yutika vine entwining a beautiful black tamala tree Mohan and as a wonderful steady lightning vine in the fresh govinda rain cloud the word rasa nidhi in the text can also mean she who is an ocean of rasa in this case radhika makes her lover happy by immersing him in the waves of her wonderful sweet amorous rasa (laughs) 
Suddenly, the transcendental revelation disappears, and Sripad humbly prays. Am I at all qualified for this precious position <laughs> of service to Sri Radha? Let me at least become the broom for sweeping the yard <coughs> of her play cottage in the forest bowers of Vrindavan as a service to those fortunate souls who are qualified to be her maidservants. So Shripad here is so humble. He's praying not even to do the brooming. He's praying to be the broom itself. He doesn't even feel qualified to actually do the act of brooming, but just to be the broom. This is the humbleness to take into our practice. Of course, by her grace, everything is possible. Let me sweep the dust that falls from merciful Sri Radha's foot soles. Thus ends verse 8. Radhe, Radhe. Uh, could you hear me? Yeah. So, this to become broom means this is dashi and dashi and dashi. Now, Mahatma Ji says it's very humble mood means Chipada feels here very humbly. He don't have qualified to become maid servant, but at least he would like to become servant of servant. And one day Kesha Baba said to us, if we become more low, low position, we can easy to get mercy. For example, please imagine this mountain, some mountains. In this mountain, on this mountain, rain come. And peak of the mountain, they cannot catch rain. Where rain goes? Rain goes to bottom. If we go more down and down and down, then mercy can get. So this bloom is very beautiful. And I remember one leader, our Srila Prabhupada. When Srila Prabhupada was in Dada Damodara temple, at that time, he stayed in front of Rupa Goswami Samadhi. 
every night he sweep Rupa Goswami's samadhi with crying. No one see, but night time he sweep. <laughs> Our Gurudev also says cleaning seva is very important to get the dust of Shri Matiradika. Like this to become sweep means deep, deep meaning. I really don't have qualification to become maid servant. But we can learn from this word, at least like a servant of a servant, this uh, we would like to practice this from sweep, this come to my heart. Shri Rade. Just a little, <coughs> excuse me, a reminder. That humility is very lovely, very sweet, but it also has a very practical function. When we're humble, then our ego is a minimum, and our ego is gone. So when we're perfectly humble, then we're perfectly in our svarup. So someone who wants to be humble, someone who wants to be the broom, wants to be perfectly in soul, perfectly in svarup. So this is the, the functional reason why we, we try to be humble. But it must be authentic humility too. It serves no purpose to go around and say, I'm nobody, you're great. I'm so stupid. Being humble means sitting in the soul, not sitting in the ego. And if we can be humble in that way, then everything is solved. Nice. And uh, one more thing we can relish in this uh, prayer. We can uh, see how clever these prayers are. Because the broom, with the broom, it can sweep the dust of Sri Radhika's lotus feet. She don't, he don't ask for the blessing for some other, to be some other tool, maybe for making the hair of, the, what is the name in English? A brush. Hair brush. brush. Yeah, hair brush. <laughs> he can also ask for this, but he uh, asked for the broom, to be the broom, to uh, sweep the dust of the lotus feet. Because in the dust is the mercy. So for sure, uh, Swamini will fulfill his desires. If he is the broom of her uh, foot dust, 
So he came, he come into contact with her foot dust. And this is the, he come into contact with the mercy itself. So we can see how clever the prayers of the Manjaris also are. If I cannot be directly, um, I'm not qualified as a Manjari, then let me be the broom. So that I come in the contact to your, to the dust of your lotus feet. That is so beautiful. And this sweep is instrument. Who use this broom? Maybe our Guru Manjari use. Means if we become instrument of Guru Manjari. Right. And we can dance. Whatever Guru Manjari said, left, right. She can move us, <laughs> whatever she like. We can dance, left, right, left, right. Any dirty things, whatever he use me, I will dance for him. Because we are one goal, to make our Swami happy, to each position. And if our Guru Manjari pick mine, Pick me as a sweep, mm -hmm. then this day we can get mercy. Put dust of Srimati Radhika. This is my desire and this is my hope. This, this day I'm waiting. Rather. I remember in Mungar Mantia some years ago, <clears throat> I don't know if one of you was there too. It was a minor festival day and the children gave a theater play like they often do. And one of the players was, was the cleaner in the temple. So the, I don't remember what the Leela was they were playing, but there was a, there was a sweeper in the play. Mm -hmm. And Gurudev insisted on playing this part. And then when the, the play was over, the children had done another thing and Gurudev was sweeping in the background, sort of. Then it was time to go to Prashadam Hall and, and eat. And they turned down the lights in the temple and and closed the gates and and when I walked by after Prashadam, I went and looked in the temple and Gurudev was still standing there sweeping. Quietly, gently, just sweeping. Done. Yeah, right. Well, sleeping. Yeah, Bandana, please. Sorry. Sorry. No, but I just, it's so amazing that you tell this because I was going through my pictures and then I saw exactly this picture of Guru Dev with the ah. thing. Yes. And I was not there in the, in the, in Munga Mandir when it happened, but this picture it was, and now I have the, the story, another story connected to it. And I thought, well, I really want to make it big uh, uh, when I come back to Germany. So it's so wonderful. Mm. And I just wanted also to share something about the humbleness. And the, um, I remember it was so nice how you explained it, Odava. And I remember when I was... Um, allowed to do the uh, seva and the guru kunj and decorating with very uh, soft yellow flowers 
the the feed um the padukas and i remember always gurudev's word this, the flowers symbolize the humbleness because they're very soft right they can be broken very very easily and to place these uh, flowers in the guru kunja was always such a beautiful seva and it's yeah the flowers they are just very sensitive right mm -hmm. sweet and symbolize our humbleness Mm. Sorry, Kishori Didi, go on. Oh, thank you, Vandana. It's very beautiful. Now, next with me, Gonamurita Didi, now taking care of Guru Kunja, is crying. Thank you for sharing this beautiful feeling, Vandana Ji. Mm -hmm. It's very touched. And what I wanted to share is about Bloom. I remember one leader from Chaitanya Charitamrita, King Prada Pardora. King Prada Pardora is king of Orissa. And in Latayatra time, he became so humble. That's why in front of Rata, first he sweep in front of Rata, means king took most lowest seva. And uh, every year Rata Yatra happen, first is blooming seva come. Like this, so blooming is, uh, represent very humbleness. So today I can meditate by your all your mercy, to remember bloom, it's very important. Many, many, many deep meaning of rasa. Sri Rade, thank you. Uh, how are we feeling? Do we want to... We have 15 more minutes till 8. Do we want to dive into verse 9 or leave the beautiful broom meditation for the day? Yeah, I think that it's better to stay in one deep meditation than to... This is my feelings personally than to enter, because uh, that, than to continue. And um, this, uh, what we meditate now together is a very deep subject. Many examples are given by uh, becoming uh, this kind of humbleness inside the heart. And uh, actually, <laughs> to clean something is in the material world is a low, lower um, seva. 
but this uh, in the spiritual world there is not such a judgment of low and high service it's all on this high level of loving exchange we can remember when the maid servants cleaning the the pot in Radhika's uh, uh, room after the night. Maybe we remember this. Uh, now we cannot speak about a lower or higher service. It's the highest service. All seva is for the maid servant. They are not judging higher and lower. All seva is highest. But here we can see that the feeling to come somehow in the contact of the dust of Swamini's lotus feet. He tried to come if it is not possible to touch her directly in the service as a maid servant, then let me be the broom, then I can touch the dust of your lotus feet. And in the spiritual world, even the broom is, uh, there is a conscious, like the venu of the flute of Mohan, this is not a, not not in our material consciousness a, a sim, simple bamboo flute. This flute is uh, every day touched by the lips of Mohan. So there is very deep meanings behind everything there. The yes. trees are conscious. Everything is conscious there. There is not nothing without conscious. And even we we uh, learned about there are the what is it in English? The distance between the locations the lila happen actually is sometimes too big what we know about the distance between the locations to uh, that they can meet in one night so we learned about that the, the whole um, the whole dam is expanding and comes closer together to make that happen. And even the seasons work together in that case, that if it's need, even in the winter time, suddenly there appear the spring, some clouds with the thunder to break the peak of Swamini and she jumps in the hands of Mohan. So there is everything is conscious. So for that, we many times we listen the prayer of the Acharyas that they like even to become a grass harm in, in Vrindavan. Because this is full of conscious and it will be one day touched by the lotus feet of Rata and Mohan. And in this way the mercy will flow. And I see our Japanese sisters when they are cleaning so enthusiastically the 
Prashadam Hall and everything, how what a nice service this is. And maybe we can also see this the sweeper. Uh, there is a, a family is, is uh, doing this seva. Mainly one person is uh, every week is coming to sweep there the, the mandir. And uh, if we meditate on this, maybe we get another view of this person also. What kind of seva he is doing since years that I know that I come to the Munge Mandi, he is doing this service. I mean, he, he gets some money for this, but I, I feel that he is doing this in a, a not without conscious. And uh, so he will for sure get the mercy of Swamini by doing this service in the, in the Mandi, directly is a direct service to the lotus feet of Swamini. So what we think here in the material world is the lowest, it's even the highest of a transcendental platform. And even Chaitanya, I remember, he once he, he cleaned this temple, right? There is a story about this. Yeah, Gundi Jamandir cleaning. Yeah, huh? So, yeah. he gave... Chaitanya Mahaprabhu make a competition, devotees. Who can catch highest dust? This is actually... Uh, Mabati Himagiri Didi, especially organized uh, students. She gets the point of absolute truth. What is love in action? She didn't teach philosophies, but she teaches how to clean temple. And uh, now many students come with her. This is what you said. Definitely mercy flows. She showed a good example for us, like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Yeah. yeah, so he also showed it's not a theoretical thing, uh, it's, a, it's a practical doing. If we use our body and senses in the service, for sure the mercy will come and we will get the dust of Swamini's lotus feet. And what is the dust of her lotus feet? This is to become a manjari. This is the real mercy. Like our Mahatma here, he got so much mercy, he became bloom of our Guru Manjari. Mm -hmm. Mercy is, is coming from the lotus feet. So in this case, we can learn, we have to come close to this, directly to the lotus feet or the dust of the lotus feet. This is the secret behind that. Like Jesus said that who likes to be the highest of you, of the, his disciples, who likes to be the highest, he has to become the servant of all. And this is actually what is the Manjaris realize this is Seva Rasa. They enjoy this service. This is not a 
uh, you have to do something like in the job to get some money or like this and okay I will do it okay I have to do I need money it's enjoying it's enjoying it's our joy Pasa. and this is uh, really relishing the prema We live as Manjaris in a permanent stage of rasa, relishing this loving exchange to our Swamini in Seva. When can I become the broom for sweeping the courtyard of the cottage in the black roof of Maharaj Vishabhanu's daughter? She is an ocean of rasa. And to whose maid servants, the supreme male person, always pitifully prays for her audience. Nice huh? to go deep in, in, in a single subject that makes relishing uh, these kind of feelings and rasa, seva rasa. So, Mahatma Ji, time is over, huh? Shira. She <laughs> died. <laughs> I hope you're not sick, huh? No, no, all good. My dear, yeah, just, um, wow, such beautiful sharing, yes. She hey, thank you all so much. Tandava to all. Jai she hey. How is Guru Dev? Guru Dave is good. He's still in Delhi. Um, Niti's better. They've moved her into a flat. An improvement is there. Mataji is not doing so good. And so this is kind of the current situation. There's incredible amounts of um, upgrades going on to the flat that they're living in. Lots of workers running around and um, shifts and perspectives and he mm -hmm. yeah coordinating managing like uh, yeah yeah yesterday i talked to video call with guru dev okay and uh, he's shining and looks healthy oh wow it's like a flow of love he distributed his love to his love families and uh, at the same time he always remembers us how is this that wow. this that who is the new guest ah, la, 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 la. <laughs> <laughs> he's yeah. enjoying Sevarasa I feel he's healthy yeah sure yeah yes yes I think also not so much long ago but uh, 
as much as I remember his this smiling, healthy, shining, happy, fully joy, satisfied face. I try to share this feeling to you. Thank you. Yes, and I feel also that he is really on that soul level that he uh, relished uh, the uh, what is meaning of reincarnation. And in the same time, he also relished his uh, relationship with this on this bodily platform. Actually, both is, is a truth. Even it's a temporary truth, but it is for the time. So, maybe this, this body, this soul will leave this body. So then this relationship and this exchange will end in this life. I also have this, uh, at the moment, this meditation about this, uh, because in, in, uh, in the short time, three close people, uh, in my circle is, uh, leaving body. And, um, so I, many time I meditate on this, uh, how the soul is coming and going. Because in the same time, I got three uh, grandchildren. So three left and three ca came. So, and I'm sure that Gurudev is also realizing this, uh, how the soul is coming and going in different bodies. But still there is a, this feeling of a relationship we had or we have in this body. So both is there. Hmm. Yes. Ciao. Ciao, Shirati. Ciao.